Who really has the power over this world? We have all felt the effects of evil in our lives, but God gives us hope. Let's arm ourselves with all that God has provided for us so that we can stand strong. Well, good morning, Victory Family. How are you guys doing this morning? Y'all excited to be here today? All right, well, it's good to be here today, and I also want to acknowledge all of our Victory Family joining us online. Go ahead and go to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 13. We're starting out in the New Living Translation version of the Bible. Hey, we've been going through our series, Live Stronger. And so it's been a blessing to go through this series because we want you to be armed with the, the equipment that God has for you. We don't want you to be battle weary. We want you to be battle ready. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to go ahead and just dive into this scripture. Uh, Ephesians 6, 13. It says, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy in, in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be standing firm. Stand your ground, putting on the belt of truth and the body armor of God's righteousness. For shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. In addition to all these, hold up the shield of faith to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. Put on salvation as your helmet and take the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Pray in the Spirit at all times and on every occasion stay alert and be persistent in your prayers for all believers everywhere. So for the last four weeks, we've been covering the different pieces of armor that we just read about. So we started out for a belt, we have truth. For body armor, we have righteousness. For shoes, we have peace. And last week, we spoke about our shield, with this faith, which is faith. And this week, I'm going to talk about the helmet, which is salvation. So we're talking about the helmet of salvation today. I'm excited to be here today, uh, not because my life is problem-proof. No one has a problem-proof life. I'm excited to be here, and I'm glad to be here today because I'm still in this place where I'm experiencing and I've, I've experienced God's deliverance. You see, uh, last month, September 5th, uh, I, I celebrated 23 years of walking with Jesus. Yeah. Amen. That's something to celebrate. You know, we celebrate our biological birthdays, man. We need to celebrate the day we gave our life to Jesus. You know, for me, it was 23 years ago on a Tuesday night close to midnight. Now, somebody is saying, there's no church open on Tuesday nights. <laughs> Shout out to Fusion. <laughs> Amen. People get Jesus saves on Tuesday nights also. But I wasn't at Fusion. <laughs> I was at my mother's home. And the Lord was convicting me and he was dealing with me. And I felt the conviction of God. And while I was on my mother's living room floor, I prayed this prayer. I said, Jesus, if you're real, take this rage away from me. Because I was angry. Take this rage away from me and save my life. And I prayed that prayer over and over and over again. I didn't know what else to pray. There was no one in the room with me. And then I experienced the presence of God come into that room and save my life. And I have never been the same since that day. You need to remember, listen, you need to remember who you were when you got saved. Not where you were. Who you were when you got saved. See, I was crazy when I got saved. So some of you are laughing because you were crazy too. <laughs> but I was crazy when I got saved and Jesus delivered me. You know, and I soon found out that was just the beginning. As I began to walk with Jesus, I found out that I had an enemy. I had an enemy who began to launch spiritual attacks at me. He formed weapons against me. Weapons formed against my marriage. He formed weapons against my family. He formed weapons against my finances. He formed weapons. Can you believe he formed weapons against my calling? But this is what I'm glad about. I'm glad that weapons did form, but according to Isaiah 54 and 17, you know it. Weapons did fail. Weapons did fail. And so 
how many of you would say, you know what, while I'm thinking about it, Pastor Darius, you know what, I think a couple of weapons been formed against me also. <laughs> you know, why are these weapons forming, forming against me? You know, against me spiritually, against me mentally, against me physically. Why are we having weapons formed against us? It's because we have an enemy. And the enemy wants to see as many of us as possible experience everlasting fire. Everlasting fire. And that's why we need the helmet of salvation. Somebody may be saying, well, why would God allow us to experience everlasting fire? God did not create everlasting fire for any human being. Not one of us, not one human being did God create everlasting fire for. In Matthew chapter 25, 41, it says this. Then he will also, this is Jesus talking about the last judgment. He says, then he will also say to those on the left hand, depart from me, you cursed into everlasting fire. Prepare it for who? The devil and his angels. He didn't create hell for you. He created it for the devil and his angels. But here's the problem. The problem is the devil was kicked out of heaven. And when he, he was kicked out of heaven, he persuaded a third of the angels to rebel and fall to earth. But now his time is short on earth. So, right, and so instead of persuading angels to rebel to earth, now he's persuading humans to rebel to hell. But we don't have to be afraid of that because, look, when we read the scripture in Ephesians chapter 6, you understand that we are equipped as soldiers. Did you know that you were a soldier? You're a soldier. You're not a civilian. You're a soldier. You know why you're a soldier? You're a soldier because you are armed and dangerous against the kingdom of the enemy. So we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be afraid because... When we enlisted into the army of Jesus Christ, we were equipped. And if we are equipped, God expects us to win. How many of you would say, I'm a winner? I'm a winner in here. And we're winners because we are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. But not only that, because we are called by his name and we are armed with spiritual weapons that, are, that the Bible says we have weapons that are not of this world that are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. So that's why we need the helmet of salvation because the stakes are high. What's at stake? Everlasting fire is at stake. And that's why we have to have a winner's mindset. We have to have a mindset that is filled with hope and expectation, not a mindset that is filled with fear. 2 Timothy 1 and 7, it says this, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Do you know what a sound mind is? A sound mind is a mind that thinks clearly. It's a mind that thinks soberly, prudently. A mind that is very conscious of its surroundings and the realities. A sound mind is a saved mind. A sound mind is a saved mind. You know, you say, you may be saying, Pastor Darius, what does this have to do with the helmet of salvation? This is why this is important. James 1 and 8, it says, a double-minded person is unstable in all of their ways. And if your mind, as we spoke about, your, if your mind is your battlefield, we have to make sure that our mind is secure and our mind understands the aspects of salvation. Our mind understands how to secure itself with salvation because that's the place where the enemy is going to fight the battle at. And that's where you fight your battle at. So that's why the helmet of salvation is necessary to secure your mind with the understanding and the knowledge of salvation. So this is what I'm going to do. This is what we're going to do this morning. I'm going to teach a little bit and I want us to understand what salvation is so that we can understand why we need the helmet of salvation and how we need to use the helmet of salvation. Here we go. So we need to understand the full scope of salvation. What is salvation? 
Salvation comes from the Greek word soteria, which means deliverance. It means God's rescue, which delivers believers out of destruction. So salvation is deliverance. Everyone say deliverance. deliverance. It's important to understand the full scope of salvation or the full scope of deliverance that needs to take place. When I gave my life to Christ 23 years ago, I experienced deliverance. I experienced salvation. But that was only the beginning. So let's look at Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, and so we can really get a picture of the full scope of what salvation is. And I'm going to slow this down so that we can really pull out of these scriptures what it is actually saying. Romans 1, 16 and 17, it says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. What is the gospel of Christ? It says it right here. For it is the power of God to salvation, which is deliverance. So I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to deliverance for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it, in what? In it, the power of God to deliverance, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by faith. All right. Now, we're familiar with this text, but in this, it says a lot. <laughs> it, it says a lot. So it says, this is the power of God to deliverance from faith to faith. But it also says by faith. Now, we're talking about the full scope of salvation. So look at this. If you were to book a vacation and you go on a website, um, it's going to ask you, where are you coming from? So if I'm going to go from Atlanta to New York, my, origin, my, where I, my point of origin was from Atlanta, but then I'm going to New York. But the another, another thing that it's going to ask us is how are we going? But I'm going by vehicle. You with me? All right. So from is the origin. That's where we began. That's the past. To is the destination. That's where we're going. That's the future. By is where we are. That's the present. So there is faith for deliverance in the past, faith for salvation, the power of God to deliver in the past. There's faith for deliverance, the power of God unto deliverance for the present. And there's faith for deliverance, the power of God for the future. What does that look like? When I gave my life to Christ 23 years ago, faith for deliverance came into my life. I gave my life and my life was changed. Salvation happened at that point. But that was the beginning. If I go to the future, there's going to be a faith for deliverance. When, my, when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. And I'm going to be, that's my two destination. And that's where I will rest for eternity, for, he, in, for, for all of eternity in heaven. But now, right now, I'm in the present. And there is salvation power of God for deliverance right now in the present where we are right now. So the full scope of salvation is past, present, and future. It's not just when I gave my life to Christ 23 years ago, and it's not just in the sweet by and by. It's right now today. So it's faithful deliverance. Uh, the scope of salvation is past, present, and future, but it's also, it's also spirit, soul, and body. So there's a full scope of salvation that is happening. So let's look at this scripture right here. Are y'all still with me? All right. That's 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23. It says this. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
That is in the future. That is eternity. And it's important for us to understand the full scope so that we can understand why we need the helmet. Let me, let me just explain this to you. You don't need the helmet of salvation when you get to eternity. There's no battles in eternity. Amen. You don't need it there. So when do you need the helmet of salvation? You need the helmet of salvation right here, right now in the present. Like right now in the present. While you're in this room, you need the helmet of salvation. So let's look at this. It says uh, salvation is deliverance, past, present, and future. Salvation is deliverance, spirit, soul, and body. So let's make sure we got this. Three aspects of deliverance. We have number one. Salvation past, deliverance from your old nature. When I gave my life to Christ, again, 23 years ago, my spirit was justified. It was just if I'd never sinned. Amen? How many of you glad that you are justified? Like the stuff that all the things that you did are washed under the blood of Jesus. Somebody need to shout hallelujah. All the stuff that you did. All the drugs that you took, all that sex. No, let me just stop. <laughs> Number one, salvation past. We talked about a deliverance from your old nature, spirit justified. Number two, salvation present, deliverance from your own will. That is your soul sanctified. This is important for today because Again, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. And the helmet is to protect your mind. So that's why this is important for, the day, for today. That is when your soul is sanctified. That's the present. And number three, salvation future. That is deliverance from your mortal bodies. That's when your body will be glorified. When you get to eternity, you'll get a new body. According to 1 Corinthians 15, uh, 53 through 58, we read, it, we read this. It says, for our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into mortal bodies. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your, vic your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? Verse 57, but thank God he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. One day you're going to get a new body. Somebody is shouting over there. Somebody's saying, I'm, I'm going to pick my body. My body going to be fine. I'm 4'3 right now. I'm going to be 6'5. No, no, you won't get to pick your body. Jesus is going to pick your body. But we get a glorified body. That is the full scope. Our, our spirit is changed when we give our life to Christ. Our soul is being sanctified. And then in the future, our body will be glorified. So the importance of the helmet is not for the past and the future. The importance of the helmet is to secure our mind surrounding salvation, the scope of deliverance right now in the present. Amen. So bring yourself right now, bring yourself into the presence, the present. And this is why it's important because the mind is where we fight our battles. You know, if the enemy can attack your mind, you won't be able to function well. If the enemy can attack your mind, you won't be able to hold up your shield of faith. If the enemy can attack your mind, you won't be able to hold up the word of God as your sword. The enemy wants to go after your head. You know, there's a movie that came out um, this May, this past May, and um, it's called In Avengers Infinity War. Now, uh, if you have not seen this movie by now, I'm assuming that you are not going to see the movie. <laughs> but just in case you are a procrastinator and you plan on watching the movie, uh, look, in about 30 seconds, I'm about to spoil the movie for you. You might want to put your ears, your hands in your ears. So in this movie... Uh, there was this big bad villain named Thanos. And he's going up against the Avengers. For those who don't know, the Avengers are the good guys. 
So he's going up against the Avengers, but he's trying to get these six stones. And once he gets these six stones, his plan is to destroy and kill half of the population of the universe. So he's going after these six stones, and by the end of the movie, he gets the last stone. He gets the last stone, and as soon as he gets it, he's about to eradicate the half of the population of the universe. And just when he's about to do it, Thor throws his axe. He doesn't have a hammer at this point. He has an axe at this point. Somebody tried to correct me on that last night. No, he has an axe. You didn't see the movie. He throws the axe at Thanos and hits Thanos right in the chest, right in the, bless, the breastplate. Thanos goes down on one knee, Thor lands right in front of him, and he t Thor says to Thanos, I told you, you'll die for that. And he pushes the, the axe into, into Thanos' chest, and Thanos' head goes down. And everyone's ready to celebrate, and you think it's over, then Thanos lifts his head up. <laughs> hey, 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 excuse my acting. I know it's terrible. <laughs> Go with it. He lifts his head up, and he says these words. He said, you should have gone for the head. <laughs> now, I wanted to tell you what happened next, but you'll have to go to see the movie to tell you. <laughs> he said, you should have gone for the head. The enemy is aiming for your head. He's aiming for your head and you have to secure your mind around the scope of salvation so that you can remain fully functional in battle in this spiritual war that has high stakes. He's aiming at your head. So we have to make sure we secure our minds. We have to make sure we protect our mind. And what is our head? You have to understand our head is Jesus Christ. He is our head. And look, he's, let me read this to you because I, this scripture I'm about to read, it blessed my soul. I've read it a lot of times, but when I was preparing this message, man, it blessed me big time. And so I'm going to read this so that you can understand the power of your head. There's three ways we protect our head. Number one, we glorify Jesus' supremacy over all creation. Colossians Verse 1, chapter 15 through 20, it says, Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen world. Everything was created through him and for him. That means he created the devil. The devil is no match for Jesus. Jesus is supreme. He's supreme over all things. Listen, all of these fake gods and all of these puny gods, listen, Jesus is supreme over every God. And this is the good news. The good news is that you know him. You know him and he knows you. Christ is supreme. Verse 17, it says, he existed before anything else and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He is the beginning, supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he, so he is first in everything. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross if now look that gets me excited if you're not excited about the supreme Christ he is supreme you know when I read that I thought about uh, an old hymn when I read we've been set free and reconciled by Christ's blood I thought about this hymn Christ the solid rock y'all remember somebody hmm <laughs> You know what it says? It says, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. If you know it, sing it. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, 
but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ. Rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand. Go low, go low. All of the ground is sinking sand. Woo! He's the solid rock. He's the only way out of this mess that we are in. He's the only way. He said it in John 14 and 6. He said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So we have to, we have to protect our head by, we glorify Jesus' supremacy over all creation. Number two, we protect our head when we solidify Jesus' authority in our life. Jesus must be Lord of your life, not only Savior. This is what he said, Luke 6 and 46. He says, so why do you keep calling me Lord, Lord, when you don't do what I say? But anyone who hears and doesn't obey is like a person who builds a house without a foundation. When the floods sweep down against that house, it will collapse into, heap, into a heap of ruins. Now listen to this. If he is not Lord over your life, your hell meant of deliverance is not secure. But look at what it says. He said, why do you call me Lord and you don't do what I say? In order for you to do what the Lord says, you have to hear what he says. You have to open up the word of God to hear what he says. See, I'm, I'm convinced, I'm convinced that people don't have Jesus as Lord, not because, not because they don't want to have him as Lord. It's because we fail to open up and have the conversations necessary with him. For, for, from, because we have distractions. We have all types of things going on in our mind that won't allow us to focus on the right now and open up our Bibles. Amen. Have you ever had a time where you say, you know what, this week I'm going to read my Bible. And then Monday comes along, you say, you know what? Tomorrow, I'm going to read my Bible. <laughs> Tuesday come along, you say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to read my Bible. You know what? Thursday will be a better time for me to read my Bible. Thursday comes around, Friday comes around, and then by Friday, you're convicted so much, you're like, I'm not going to read my Bible just to get makeup uh, <laughs> reading. I'll just wait till I get to church, and I'll start next week. And some of us have been doing that for years and years. You have to solidify Jesus as Lord, Jesus' authority in our life. We have to do that to protect our head. And lastly, number three, we protect our head. Well, let me read back up. We protect our head when we glorify Jesus' supremacy over all creation. We protect our head when we solidify Jesus' authority in our life. Number three, we, ex we protect our head when we exemplify Jesus' power in our life. Now, this is extremely important for today because uh, we are an example of Jesus' power. There's nothing that displays Jesus' power more than a changed life. Nothing. And when our life is changed, it represents the power of God in our life. And if we don't understand this in the present, look, if we don't understand his power is available for, available for us in the present, the enemy will get us discouraged and defeated. Because if all we're thinking about is the past and the future and he's defeating us right now, we don't, have, we don't stand a chance to win this battle. So we have to exemplify Jesus' power in our life. And I want you to think about this because Jesus' is, Jesus is power is, is present for us today. So we talked about salvation, the helmet of salvation. It's not for the past and it's not for the future. It is for the present day battle. And it's been like that for a long time. You remember uh, back in the beginning, back in, uh, in Exodus, when God announced himself, when he announced who he was, he didn't say, I was what I was. He didn't say, I will be what I will be. When God announced who he was, he announced himself as, I am that I am. And listen to this. This is why. He announced himself as being ever-present. 
ever present in the now. And if we have to, we have to understand that that's where his power is for us today. It is ever present in the now, right now, the helmet of salvation to secure our mind against the fiery attacks of the enemy is right here and right now. He is that same I am today. He's the same I am today. I love this quote by C.S. Lewis, and this is going to help us get to where we're going to get to because I got to get us somewhere so that we can secure our mind, secure our mind surrounding deliverance. C.S. Lewis said this in the book, Screw Tape Letters. If you have never read that, I, Spiritual Warfare, I encourage you to read that. This is in chapter 15 of that book. He says this, humans live in time, but God destines them to eternity. He, therefore, I believe, wants them to attend chiefly to two things, to eternity itself and to that point of time which they call the present. Now listen to this last sentence. For the present is the point at which time touches eternity. The present is the point at which time touches eternity. See, eternity is not inside of time. Eternity is outside of time. So right now, in the present, right now, right now at this point, time touches eternity. That's the cross. That's where God intersects eternity with your current reality. And when he intersects eternity with your current reality, his power can be made available to you by faith. Remember, by faith in the beginning? You remember what the Bible said about faith? It said, now faith. So right now, his power to deliver, his helmet of deliverance is available to us now. C.S. Lewis called this, he coined this as the eternal now. That's what we're living in right now in this moment. You know deliverance is now for you. Not tomorrow. Not yesterday. Deliverance is now. Here's my question to you. If deliverance is now in this moment, you know, they say a moment is about a minute and 30 seconds. If deliverance is now, are you here right now? I'm going to ask that question again. <laughs> you don't have to answer. Are you here right now? Not just your body, but is your soul engaged right now? Or are you thinking about what I'm going to do when I get home? Are you thinking about, man, I got a lot of work to catch up on Monday? But are you, are you right now in this moment? Because if you're here right now, you can be touched by God's power to deliver right now. That's what the enemy tries to do. He sets up his schemes to distract us from the eternal now. His schemes is to entangle us. His, his schemes are to distract us. His schemes are to deceive us. You see, he'll entangle us in worldly affairs so that you can't focus on right now. You know, like I said, you may be thinking about, you know, what I'm going to do when I get home. Maybe thinking about what I have to do Monday. The entanglements of life. He will entangle you in worldly affairs. He will, he will distract you with good causes. He'll have you to build your life on good causes. But I want to tell you, look, there's a great, the greatest cause of all, for God is the salvation of souls. Because we understand, look, we've already talked about it. Look, what's at stake for everyone is everlasting fire. God's salvation and deliverance is to deliver us from this temporal world into eternity, to get it back to how it was in the beginning, eternity with God. So he'll distract you with good causes, good causes for people. And I'm not saying bad causes, but if those good causes trump and those good causes are above what his... His, his greatest cause is, then it's just a distraction. Or he'll deceive us into having divided devotions. 
He'll divide our devotions. There's a scripture, Matthew 6 and 24, it says, no one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other, or you will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Now, some of you are saying, well, that, that scripture is not talking to me, Pastor Darius, because I pay my tithes. Jesus is, just use, Jesus is just using money as a primary example. But he's saying you cannot serve two masters. You know, it may not be money for you. It may, you, may be you're trying to serve God and culture. You know, the wave of the culture, the trend of the culture, you're trying to appease the culture and you're trying to appease God at the same time. At some point in time, you're going to love one and you're going to despise the other. And I see it happen to Christians all the time because we don't understand. We're not, we're not civilians. We're not humanitarians. We're not here to please the culture. We're here to please God. We're here to do battle. We're here, we're here to be soldiers. We're here to win. So you may be trying to serve God and money. You may be trying to serve God and culture, or you may be trying to serve God and country. You know, that happens. And God is saying, look, look, you can love your country, but anything you love more than me and my purpose, you love it too much. It becomes an idol. It becomes a false god. So you cannot love, uh, love your country more than you love God. I love America. But I can't love America more than I love God. You may be Nigerian. You may love Nigeria. But you cannot love Nigeria more than you love God. Or you may be Brazilian. And you love Brazil. But you cannot love Brazil more than you love God. And you cannot love the American people more than you love people from other countries. Because God loves all of us. Now that is, listen, let me, let me say that. That's not a political statement. That is to sober our mind and secure our mind with the big picture. So here's what we need to do. I want to, when God was dealing with me about this, he was saying there are some areas of deliverance that, uh, that we need to call out. And we need to secure our mind so that we can experience deliverance now. And, and here's the thing. When I speak of deliverance, I'm not talking about God delivering you from your bill collectors. <laughs> Some of you, hey, hey, I could use that deliverance too. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about God delivering you from the snares of the enemy the entanglements of the enemy, the distractions of the enemy, setting you free so that you can have a mind that is secure, that you can go to sleep at night and be glad about the fact that you are a child of God, that you're not worrying about retirement. Listen, listen, we got the greatest retirement plan ever created. <laughs> Woo! The greatest retirement plan ever created is, is eternity. Now, look, I'm not against reti retirement. Prepare for retirement. But you have to understand that there's a greater security because you could be focusing all of your energy on the future retirement, and God could be saying to you, your soul is required of you today. You need to prepare for that retirement. So in order for us to prepare for that, we have to secure our heart, our mindset with the helmet of deliverance right now. Amen. Deliverance is right now in the eternal now. So I'm going to call out some particular areas that the Lord just told me to write down. And as I'm calling these out and as I'm saying these things, just think about yourself. Again, when, I'm when we're saying this, look, don't allow yourself, don't allow the enemy to tell you a lie and say something like, yeah, you're working on that. You'll have that fixed in a couple of weeks. He'll, that's, that's his scheme. His scheme is to push you into the future so that you can forego deliverance that is present right now. So let me call out a couple of things. You can have 
deliverance from different areas of sin. I got four areas of sin. A lot of times the enemy is not going to use blatant sin. He's going to use these different things to entrap us. So uh, deliverance from addictions, porn, pills and other drugs, internet, deliverance from internet, deliverance from video games, deliverance from sex, sex outside of marriage, not sex inside of marriage. We don't need deliverance from that. I had to say that. Deliverance from addictions such as food. Deliverance from inner vows. Some of us have said, again, this is all in the mind. Some of us have said, I will never be alone. And therefore, you jump from relationship to relationship. And you spend time with people who so serve no purpose and are, are no good for you because you just can't stand being alone. I will never trust a man again. And so you don't trust a man again. And so you begin to set your affections on the same sex because of what someone did to you and harmed you. I will never trust a man again. I will always take care of myself. You won't allow people to get in and, and allow people to get in your life because you feel like it's, it's, it's all up to me. Addictions like, uh, uh, inner vows like, I will always rescue my children. Listen, listen. Some of us have an inner vow that it's our responsibility to be God for our children. And our, chi our, our quote unquote, not children, our grown adult is now 46 years old and we're still rescuing her or rescuing him. God wants to set us free from that. He needs to be their God, not you. I will never open up my heart again because you've been hurt, you've been disappointed, you've been abandoned. The Lord is saying, look, when you say that, you also close your heart to me. Here's another one. Here's another one I put in here. I will never trust another church. Some people right now, while I'm giving this message, you're saying, what is this pastor's agenda? Because you've been hurt. You've been done wrong by a church. And you've made an inner vow. So you need deliverance from addictions, deliverance from inner vows, deliverance from divided devotion. Where have you pledged your loyalty? And I talked about this a little earlier. That may be your career. You serve your career more than you serve your God. Look, and God wants us to prosper in our career, but it is a vehicle for salvation. You're a king. You're a king out in the marketplace to be a light in darkness, not just to heap up riches for yourself, which brings us to uh, another divided devotion. Um, can be riches, the de deceitfulness of riches. We have our... We have our devotion divided between riches and God. Or here's a big one, politics. You know, when it comes to politics, um, we get so divided with politics that we will say and spew anything about our potential Christian brother that is on the other side of an issue. Culture divided devotions. Some of us have a divided devotion, devotion for certain types of entertainment. That we say, I'm a part of that entertainment, I'm a part of that culture, I believe in it, and we've divided our devotion with that. And then lastly, we need deliverance from distractions, like social media. And a lot of these things, and, and this is what I'm saying, meaningless distractions. You can use these things as avenues to promote the kingdom of God. But if it's idle time and it's killing idle time from you, then it is a distraction. Material possession, relationships can be a distraction. We need deliverance. So I called out these areas, and I'm believing that the Holy Spirit right now is dealing with your heart. Right now. I'm going to have the worship team to come back out. They're going to come out right now. And... As I called out those areas, I believe the Holy Spirit was dealing with you. 
And he wants to deliver you right now in the present. He wants to make his power known. He wants to give you clarity of, of a sound mind right now in the present. So while we're worshiping, this is going to allow you, if you're not in the present right now, this is going to allow you to come into this moment right now. And I believe as you acknowledge that before God, God is going to give you some strategy on a way to get delivered. When I gave my life to Christ 23 years ago, this is what I said to myself. Um, if I believe that Jesus set me free, and because he set me free, I said to myself, if I'm free, then I need to live like I'm free. So here's what I did. You know, I said, if I'm, if I'm free and I am free, I looked at everything around me that didn't represent my freedom, and I got rid of it. I looked at some of the friends that I have, and, I, and listen, these were my best friends. But I said to myself, if I'm free, if I'm really free, I wouldn't be hanging out with them anymore. So I called my friends, I told them, look, guys, y'all won't hear from me for a while. That's what I literally did. At that particular time in my life, I had a job. I was caught up in some things. I was doing a whole lot of crazy stuff. And I said to myself, you know what? If I'm really free, I don't need to go back to that job. I called the job the next day and quit. The, matter of fact, I didn't call the job. I just quit the job. Give them a two weeks notice, <laughs> two day notice or something. Because what's at stake is eternity. So I'm going to ask you to stand to your feet. And as you are being delivered right now in the, in the eternal now, then you're going to allow yourself, and hey, look, if you can, don't leave out. Don't leave out because I'm going to come back after this song, and I'm going to pray a prayer over us. Some of you need to be delivered for the first time. You need to experience eternal salvation today for the first time by faith today. So after I come back, I'm going to pray a, repentant, a prayer of repentance and salvation over us for our deliverance right now. This song, this song is about us celebrating, saying hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, you have delivered me.